This is FinTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. You're probably getting tired of looking at me already today. <laughs> and back to back here. Uh, it's Wednesday. This is our flagship energy show. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, supported, as you must know, by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful, constructive, and helpful energy organizations on the planet, right here in Hawaii. Nay, wow, we are so lucky in so many ways. My co host for this show, Ramsey Brown of Hawaii Energy. Hi, Ramsey. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> we have two special guests, and they are from WSP. Uh, that's Williams. Williams Sales Partnership, but it's... Which is actually sort of merged into WSP, which is a global organization. Uh, Charles uh, Shaloi Sheep uh, to my double left, and Kevin Loma to my immediate left. Hi, guys. Hi, Jay. Nice to have How's you here. Thank you for having us. So I, I get the idea that you guys are in, in, in code. <laughs> Doesn't sound right. That you, that you care a lot about building codes in order to achieve energy efficiency. Is that a good start? That'd be a good, good statement. Okay. And is that what WSP does? No. We, we design building systems. Our portion of, the WSP, of WSP design building systems, but we utilize the code for the standard of how we design. Okay. And in energy efficiency, we use that as a, a guideline to, for our designs, or at more of a, like a baseline of our, our design. Ramsey, can you give me some depth on these guys? You know, what is it about them that we like? They're deep guys. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. That's it? <laughs> they do. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do quite a bit of design with many different organizations that you've heard of all across Hawaii, um, all through downtown. Um, they work with the DOE. They do work with MMS schools, different private schools. Um, again, many of the tenant improvements in downtown commercial buildings. So WSB has, done, has their hand in a, a lot of different projects, and they always look to exceed, um, exceed the standard, yeah. exceed expectations, and exceed code. Yeah, that's so you guys are the Cadillac, then, of, of energy efficiency and, and building and code, right? Am I right? I would say so. Okay, all right, there's well, two of us. Uh, Let's see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we always look at what brings the most value to the client. We can design a Cadillac if the client needs a Cadillac. Yep. We could design a Prius if the client needs a Prius. And we love designing Teslas when the client wants a Tesla. Um, but, you know, different strokes for different folks. And uh, sometimes people are just going to get the car and sell it right away. And sometimes people are going to operate that car until uh, the wheels fall off. And so we need to make sure that for whatever uh, need the customer has, we can meet. Boy, that's pretty flexible. <laughs> yeah. You got yeah. to you got to you got to be able to pay the bills. Sure. So. And, well, and that's the way you get customers actually yes. by, by offering flexibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's because there are people out there who look for value, value engineering on everything. Yeah. Value engineering, by the way, if you didn't know, means go cheap. <laughs> <laughs> <That>. <laughs> you guys are both engineers. That is true. Yeah. What, yeah. What well, kind of what kind of engineers? The answer is usually good engineers. No, but what kind of engineers? Mechanical engineers. Yeah, we're licensed yeah. mechanical engineers. Yeah. Licensed. Licensed. Okay. And where did you go to school? University of Michigan. Okay. Fair. I went. <laughs> I went to the University of California at Santa okay, Barbara okay, and right, to the uh, okay. University of New South Wales. How did Sydney. you meet? Did you meet in WSP? Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not dating anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we met at, professionally <laughs> at, at WSP. Yeah. Okay, so you know, I got some questions. Now, it's been made clear to us in advance that you guys exceed the new code, the code that was just recently uh, you know, signed by uh, David Ige that was in the process uh, with Howard Wig for years or from DBED in the energy office. And, <clears throat> and this code is supposed to be the cat's meow. It is supposed to be the Cadillac. It is supposed to raise our sights, right, Ramsey? It was supposed to be, you know, the ship comes in. <coughs> this is what we've been waiting for all these years. But you don't even, you don't even go there. You go better. How do you, why do, why do you say that? So as, as Charles mentioned before, we, we design what the, the owner desires and wants. So <coughs> it really depends on the, the, uh, the client that we're dealing with. If they want, if they just need something right away and they only have a finite amount of money to spend in it, then we'll design to the, the previous code, which is the IEC 2006. And that's still the code currently in all the counties because only the it state has been ratified it. by the counties. Yeah, and, yeah. And 
who knows when that's going to happen. We're oh. we're trying to work with them to get that push. I'm so but, sad about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but for like the DOE, for UH, uh, for federal projects, we, yeah, we are designing to to what a life cycle cost analysis. So what would be the best for over the long term? Like if you're operating the building, you're gonna have to pay the the, the bills for ten years, twenty years. We're gonna design what's best over that period of time and do a comparison your first cost compared to life cycle cost and what comes out in the long run. So where do you start when you have these conversations, with, you know, these flexible conversations with the clients? You say, well, look, here's the, here's the new code and we're going to do at least that. Or, or do you want to go back to the previous code sometimes? Well, that, would be, that would be below the new code. I mean, where do you start in order to achieve the standards that you want to offer? Sure. So, I mean, we'll set benchmarks, right? We'll lay it out for them and say, you know, here are the benefits of this system design or this approach or this car over the life of the car, right? Are you going to be operating this car for the long term? Are you also going to be maintaining this car for the long term? Or are you going to be selling it off? And each of these different strategies um, have a different benefit depending on, on that viewpoint. So we always try and set energy goals to start, benchmarks for design, and minimum requirements. Right, so the minimum requirements would be what the energy code is current. Yeah, you're never going to go design. below the law. We would never do that. At least comply yeah. with the law. And then we would go beyond that where we feel that there's some added value, especially in a place where we have 30 cents a kilowatt hour for energy. So if something can pay back in five to seven years, that's a great payback for a lot of um, people. You know, some people need a three-year payback, and some people are comfortable with a 15-year payback. And we can lay those things out, and we like to lay those things out early. So you're actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's different points, uh, different results, but you're actually writing an, another code, your code. Uh, and it's above the, so give me an example. <coughs> give me an example of a variable where you would say, well, you know, the code says this, but we want to go that. So, so when it comes to PVs, that's one thing. Code doesn't require photovoltaics on, on any building. But by doing analysis, you can see even if you're not doing a PPA agreement, power purchase agreement, I'm familiar with that, you, it usually pays within five to seven years putting in a, a PV system. So if an owner occupied building, usually they're, yeah, we're willing to spend that initial upfront to get that payback in five to seven years, and then that system lasts for 20 years for that. So the extra 13 years, you're, you're just making money off of, off of that. So it, it's a, that's a, a very simple way, way that system that we would design on any project that's way above what the code is, but it's easy for an owner to justify it. And something that um, is maybe unique to our office and something that me and Kevin are um, pretty passionate about, and the new code is actually going to help us, is um, energy storage, right? So batteries. So a lot of times on almost, um, you know, most of our buildings, the, the, the larger buildings at least, we need um, backup diesel generators, right? And these allow some time for people to escape um, during, during a fire, right? They give power to the building so that people can exit oh, with yeah, lights, sure. right? And so you, you drive down, you know, Queen Street and you'll see um, a big generator sitting outside of a parking lot or some exhaust stacks coming out of the side of the building. Architects hate that, right? So is there an opportunity to replace that with battery storage now that the battery technology is improving and costs are yeah. coming down? Yeah. These batteries can be stored anywhere in the building. Well, with the new code, um, they're providing clearer guidelines for how battery storage can operate within a building and how it can be integrated into the life safety system. So that's something that me and Kevin are really passionate about because we see a great benefit to the building of eliminating these ugly pieces of equipment from the you know, perimeter space. We see um, a great savings on the maintenance of generators, because those are you know, something you have to maintain regularly, every week or every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then there's another benefit that a lot of people don't quite recognize, is if some of those batteries maybe have a bit of spare capacity, we can then use it for demand response. We can then use it for um, renewable energy storage, and that will help flatten the curve out, right? That will help HECO achieve their um, goal, or achieve the state achieve their goal of 100% uh, um, clean, clean energy. So that's one way that we're hoping to lean on the new code to offset something that, you know, has been a design issue, 
um, and provide benefit to not only our customers but to the to the community as a whole. Yeah, yeah and to bring Ramsey into the discussion. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why energy has this rebate between five between five and nine? That's when the the higher <coughs> energy usage is in, in Hawaii, and they're they're always trying to find methods to to reduce that energy consumption between five and five and nine. Unfortunately, at this point in time, they don't they don't let you use battery storage to reduce the energy consumption during there. They don't have a rebate that give get for that between five and nine. But we're trying to work with them because that that's a a great opportunity to help out Hiko to not have to expand their uh, their generator capacity by using battery storage so you you just you'd run it you'd run power through the batteries during the day store up the energy and then between 5 and 9 you can run your building off of that battery not use the heco power and then switch it back after that mm -hmm. Ramsey I noticed you've been writing furiously <laughs> Uh, does this mean you agree, disagree, or you want to add something? I'd like to add something. Um, what you heard there is that there are customers looking for rebates for battery storage, and that's not under mandate as Hawaii Energy from the PUC. Um, however, we do continue to work with them as far as reducing their load, reducing their customer's load in the case of a design firm um, and their energy consumption. And I had a follow-up question wondering of, of our guests, you know, can you highlight some of the potential benefits of the new code? Sure. You want to talk about genera generalities of new code? Sure. Um, you know, in general, we have mechanical equipment efficiencies are going to be required by code. Lighting efficiency um, standards are going to be required by code. But if you look around the U.S., that market has already been driven by, um, you know, U.S. Green Building Council and LEED certification. Yeah. Um, California, um, um, Washington, and some of the states with high, uh, stricter codes. So for me and Kevin to pull, you know, a high efficiency mechanical um, piece of equipment, there isn't really other some non-efficient um, option. Everybody out there is giving you something that's pretty good, right? You're not going to get a car out there that's only going to give you five miles per gallon nowadays, mm -hmm. right? So the, the more interesting pieces of the new energy code are the requirements for commissioning in a building. So coming in and making sure things are operating per the design. Um, some additional metering that may be required so that people can see how the building's um, how the building energy consumption is being used divided by different tenants rather than just one number for an entire building and then the storage stuff that we have already talked about and a couple other one uh, duct test duct leakage testing so mm -hmm. a lot of times the, the uh, contractor constructs it but then <coughs> if, it's, if it's leaking before it actually gets to the place that they're trying to supply the air to, then that's just wasted energy right there. And then uh, uh, skylights and big box type retail st stores, mm -hmm. by having those, uh, a lot of times it's being done already because it just makes sense to do that, but that just encourages them because you don't have to run, all throughout the day you won't have to turn the lights on. And then another one is demand control ventilation. So uh, ventilation, ventilation is the outside air required to be fired to a space so the air quality stays good for uh, human occupants. And that, but then bringing in outside air to do that, that it, it uses up a lot of energy to, to uh, condition that, to make it so it's not, right now typical, it's like 85 degrees and like 70% relative humidity, but you have to cool that down to 55 degrees. So that's a lot of energy to do that. But you don't need to bring a lot of ventilation air when the building's not, or the space isn't occupied. So to have systems in there to shut off the outside air or to lower the outside air when it's not occupied. <coughs> now there isn't going to be a code to, to man, mandate that to, to save energy. I'm beginning to get it, Ramsey. These guys are super engineers. Okay. They're, <laughs> and they're mechanical energy, dedicated to mechanical and energy issues and engineering analyses. And they come and they tell you, you know, how you should achieve the best energy, rather the best um, yeah, energy efficiency mm -hmm. for the best price, yeah. and, and where you can go on the on the continuum, um, and they have all the options in their pockets, and so they can give you some pretty sophisticated advice. Um, and I, you know, the question I put to you guys is: are, are you alone in the field? Are you the only guys in Hawaii who does? Is anybody else doing this? I, you don't I, have to name well, names. Well, <laughs> I think we should. Um, right, I think the biggest trigger in how different firms operate is cost, right? And everybody asks, oh, what about these um, things having different cost impacts, right? Oh, this new energy code's coming out. 
how does it impact cost? Yes. And so, um, you know, we 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 would like to think that we provide a a, a high value service, and um, there are other players out there who maybe have you know, or maybe more of the the low price leader, and you get sometimes you get what you pay for, but. You know, our belief, and maybe Kevin can chime in on, on more of this, but that the overall cost that we're offering for om the majority of people in, in Hawaii. When you say that, you mean the cost of construction, uh, design and construction. The overall value of their property, not just life first cost. Life yeah. cycle. First cost, the energy code is likely to increase the first cost of construction. So who... Who is going to be penalized for that is the first question you want to ask, right? And for the most part, it's um, it's developers who are likely going to sell off that car, yeah. right? Somebody's going to build that car and sell it off yeah. and never operate the hybrid, never operate the electric or even the fuel efficient um, uh, gas car. But for for University of Hawaii, for the Department of Energy, for uh, Kamehameha Schools, yeah. for all the hotels, you know, th those are big clients of ours. We believe that spending a little bit more up front will pay back, you know, for the sure. most part in less than five years for on most of our designs. And, and the energy code is now requiring that. And so we're excited about um, that. So, uh, Kevin, but, but how but much of what Charles has said do you agree with? <laughs> I agree with everything he said. But <laughs> also, Kevin. also to answer your question, <laughs> as far as other engineers in, in the industry here, I'm, I'm the, the president of the local ASHRAE Hawaii chapter. So I, I extend the acronym for our audience. It actually doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> okay. it, it, used, it used to mean American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. At dinner, my wife and I speak <laughs> of little else. <laughs> yes. Well, you must have fascinating <laughs> conversations then. Because my, she doesn't even want to talk about it with my wife. But, but now, since it's not just the United States, it's the world, so they just say it's just ASHRAE. No more uh, acronym. Okay. But. Yeah, with, throughout the, the 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 state, most engineers are uh, have a desire to to design a uh, an energy efficient system. Some are a little more reluctant to go to newer technologies because uh, lack of experience, or just because the tried and true method has been has worked so far. So why why try something new? But as as our uh, our office has. We sort of uh, test the boundaries there. We, we've done uh, the at the UHIT building. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Sure. The new data center. We had a, an active chill beam system there. We I think a good example is the uh, the Nelha uh, visitor center right off of the right off the Kona yeah. airport. We have a passive down. We're going system. there. We're going there on Saturday to do some filming. So yeah, I'm there's a small for building work, yeah. with the with a big um, PV array coming off the roof. That's oh sure. Very, the uh, energy building. The, that's yeah. it. Dan and always special. Uh, expression of energy at Nelha. That's, that's it. So you know what I'm getting on this, Ramsey? It's really getting interesting. I'm, I'm getting that engineering as a profession has changed. <laughs> ah. Because now it's interlocking with energy, and now it's interlocking with this kind of value analysis that you have to make. It's yeah. also more sensitive to what customers want. Um, and that, uh, you know, as a professional matter, it requires you to listen to the customer and try to shape your recommendations around that. I think it's something I'm curious about. Yeah. As, as the profession changes, how does uh, some of the engineering and energy code changes affect me <coughs> as, a, as a resident of the state and, and how houses might be built? Oh, what a great cliffhanger. <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna to have a short break now. <laughs> okay, we come back, we're going to let them see if they can wrap their minds around that question, okay? Stay okay. tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution. How 
gotta make a cry today. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Take it to bed, so cry a little more, harder than <laughs> Bingo, we're back <clears throat> with Ramsey Brown, my, my co host, Charles Shaloy Keep, Shaloy Cheap. Thank you, Charles. And Kevin Aroma. And they're both from WSP, which is a super engineering firm here in Hawaii <laughs> and elsewhere in the world, dealing with energy and analysis for construction purposes. And they are mm, ubiquitous uh, in their own way. That's yes. a nice thing. It's okay, <laughs> okay. to be ubiquitous. In a global market, it's okay. So the cliffhanger <laughs> question, Ramsey, let's go through that. Sure, we've been talking a lot about commercial buildings, and so I wanted to know, as a resident of Hawaii, how might the new energy code and your engineering expertise uh, affect home? So, so one th a good thing about the new energy code uh, uh, that Howard Wig worked on, uh, everyone, a lot of people are familiar with Howard Wig. He got an award for it, you know. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. I think it's out there. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, that, the, the new code allows you to actually build homes cheaper than, than the previous code with the, the uh, tropical homes amendments that they have there. One of the things there is they allow, it encourages to have lo larger overhangs. With those overhangs, the sun doesn't hit the walls, and then there's less heat transfer through the walls because there's not direct sunlight on it. But by, since there's no direct sunlight on it, you can, you can build with single, uh, single single wall construction as opposed to a lot of the homes now are being built with double wall construction because you have to fit R13 insulation in there. Whereas <coughs> now you can just make a single wall and you need, don't need any insulation so you're saving there. Plus if you have good reflectivity on the roof then you can reduce your insulation down to an R19 as opposed to having R30 insulation that the old code had. And then with with these large overhangs and good good ventilation in there it, it's less likely that you have to operate the air conditioning system or you don't need an air conditioning system at all. So there is opportunities to, to build a home cheaper with this new energy code. And it's not forcing you to, to do something that's not necessary. So are you working in this market? If I, if, I, if I were to rebuild my home or build a new home and I called you guys up, you could help me with this kind of thing? Well, that would typically be just a contractor because for a small single family home, it wouldn't be necessary to hire uh, someone like our company. But, but what we do do is we look at opportunities to reduce the need for air conditioning while maintaining comfort in the space. So we can provide some guidance on size of overhangs, you know, ceiling fan locations, you know, window placement so that you get the proper, um, you can capture the trade winds and still maintain comfort in your house. Those types of things are um, right up our alley in terms of uh, engineering. So are you, are, you, nice. are you cheap or inexpen expensive or what? We how, do you, how do you build? We normally don't do small single family homes. We'll do larger single family Just homes. Just give me a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would sure. give you a break. <laughs> Ramsey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Jay, let's I mean, give these guys a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, is it you, you build by the hour? Like, you know, engineers normally. No, you, you build on what? On how much money you save? How do you build? Fixed we fee. do yeah. um, time and materials. We have been involved with. Um, energy contracts where um, you know somebody would offer to replace a piece of equipment for a set price each year and then um, get paid back on the energy oh, savings. Creative, so, creative is yeah. good. This so was not contract. something that was done 10 years ago in the engineering field, was it? A lot of it's b benefited by newer technologies yeah. with regards to metering because yeah. before it, it'd be more difficult to actually evaluate. You wouldn't have a way to value it. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. finding out what it's actually doing be more difficult. So with all with newer technology, it's it's easier to, to evaluate what has actually happened or what's good or predict what's going to happen as well. So you know what, Ramsey, you might be interested in asking them where is this all going? You know, as a as yeah. a construction yeah. matter, a cost, you know, uh, and an engineering matter, and a, and a governmental matter. Mm -hmm. Where where are we on the continuum toward nirvana here? And uh, and where are we going? You might Honestly. consider asking. Well, <laughs> <laughs> take it away. So, yeah, I, can, I can take it away. Maybe I have a question for you. I mean, we were looking. I, I, I've been doing energy efficiency, you know, engineering for a while. And uh, one of my clients asked me one time, have I heard of uh, Javon's paradox? And it's, it's this idea, this economic terminology that occurs when. How do you spell Javon? Uh, J-E-V-O-N-S. 
Okay, Jabon's paradise. Yeah. Paradox. 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 <laughs> so it's paradox it came paradox, from yeah. this guy, and he was studying the use of coal in uh, steam engines. And as the as the uh, as the price of coal dropped, or sorry, as the efficiency of the steam equipment um, increased, the demand for coal actually increased as well, because the cost of coal dropped because there wasn't as much. Um, demand for it because things are more efficient. Yep. But people still wanted the energy that those steam engines were generating. So we're talking about, you know, dropping, um, making things more efficient, right? But we're also then talking about potentially dropping the cost of energy. And does that mean that um, as a finite, you know, island, that we're okay now? Our infrastructure does it ne never has to expand because we're just going to keep dropping off and we're just going to get go to zero through efficiency? No, right? We're growing economically, we're growing in population, and, you know, maybe our energy per person is uh, decreasing. Overall energy is still increasing. Yeah. So that really wraps into the, the 2045 100% clean energy um, target, and I like to think about it as we're, we're looking at um, energy dieting, and we also need to talk about energy exercise. Right, so one side is exercising the power generation, and the other side is dieting. Efficiency. Efficiency, and you need both to be healthy, right? Like they, you always work for those six-pack abs. I always see you at the gym, <laughs> and it's like well, you're just not going to get there. I'm a living six-pack, <laughs> but it's not the six-pack. You're just pack not going to get there unless the diet's there too, right? So we're looking at trying to extend the use of our existing infrastructure, prepare our infrastructure for the influx of of new energy technologies and then be able to watch how that works with all of our metering. Yeah. So that's kind of, I think, where it all comes together is you know, being able to understand that we're a finite island, we have a finite resource, and there's opportunities to, to create new energy. And you know, one, one slide, have you ever seen Elon Musk's Blue Square presentation? No. In the United States. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. If we have this slide, what is that one? Six, seven, slide seven. So I think you had it up just a little while ago. So Elon Musk said that for, um, PV to power all of the U.S., all we would need is an uh, area equal to that blue square. Okay, this is, and, you know, whatever. You had to put it in Texas? Yeah, that's, yeah, I guess because so. they have good sunlight there as well. <laughs> it's so. not near Houston. That's the good news. <laughs> so, you know, we have this, a similar goal, right, clean energy for all of, all of Hawaii. And so I looked at it for um, Oahu. What does the blue square look like for Oahu? So the next slide, uh, there it is right there. So there's a tiny red... Um, Square, that's the uh, Kahe, that's the, the um, generation, plant. yeah, the power plant yeah. right there at uh, Electric Beach, right? I see it there on the left. Yep, and then there's a blue square uh, right there, uh, sort of north of Waipahu. And that's, you know, kind of engineering guesstimate at, uh, at what we would need in terms of renewable power PVs to generate enough power for the entire island. Now, would it only work during the day? Yes, absolutely. So, do we need some technology to to help us get there? Absolutely. Do we need some storage to manage the influx of power? Absolutely. And so, you know, we're dieting right now. We're trying to get some things ready for our, our exercising. And it might be in one place or it might be distributed everywhere, but uh, we're hoping that the energy codes can help us get ready for that. So, so the energy codes are not going to, we can't get to our, uh, the 100% clean energy goal of 2045 <coughs> just by energy codes and reducing our energy consumption. It's going to have to get there by another means, and we feel that the battery storage is, is going to be part of the, the main part and a big part <coughs> of our, our way to achieve that 2045 goal that uh, Governor Ige uh, Well, had. don't you think we ought to wait for better batteries? That's a provocative question. Well, that's why he doesn't feel that way. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true. Kauai feels that the battery Kauai, Kauai. technology is fine right now, and most every day, they, they, they have enough, they produce enough power to, with their PV system, at least in the middle of the day, they have enough uh, PV capacity well, for the entire island, and they're almost there with regards to their battery storage. So. But let me, let me reframe it to say that uh, don't, don't you agree that battery storage is going to have some remarkable development Absolutely. in the next few years, that yep. re disruptive development, and it's going to be way more efficient than it is now. Yep. Uh, and that's got to be feeding into your analysis going forward. Now. Well, I mean, that's a big part of why we believe in conservation. We want to give Hawaii enough time to adopt these technologies um, and, and, and absorb these technologies successfully, 
rather than hitting this you know, 1800 megawatt, which is the peak capacity that we have here in Oahu right now, and having to rely on whatever technology is available now to get there. Right? And that's where our diet is going to help us with all of our exercise. <laughs> and, and another thing, with the cost of batteries, yeah, they're a lot, five years from now, they're going to be a lot cheaper. But right now, when we work with the owners, everything is, can you justify the cost of what you're putting in there? <coughs> so we're not, putting, we're not designing in batteries that we're not justifying the cost with, with regards to life cycle no. costs. So. You know, it strikes me that what you do, I, 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 I program, you know, I don't tell everybody that. Um, what you do can be reduced to an algorithm with yeah. variables here, like computer program. And artificial intelligence make it even more powerful. And you know, you don't even have to go down to the client's office just to have them answer some questions, and it'll pop up with yeah. with a solution, right? <laughs> well, we're all Isn't that where we're going we, on this? Are we all just a big algorithm? <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a computer with a lot of errors, yeah. but you know, I try my best. But isn't that where it's going? I mean, you guys have to be using computers a lot in what you do. Absolutely. And there's be more and more going forward, no? It's just helping us make decisions faster. It's helping us crunch data and, and take in more variables into our equations and still have a, a beneficial solution, right? Engineering 30 years ago, there was only so many things you can consider. But now we can consider the entire year, right? The whole weather of 10 years mm -hmm. and see how this equipment is operating most efficiently rather than just that one hot day. Can we keep it yeah. cool that one hot day? That's old school engineering, right? That's non-computer engineering. Now we can look at the whole year. Yeah, we can keep it cool that hot day, but how are we doing on these other 80% of the time days? Are we being energy efficient? Are people comfortable? You know, can we turn it off? One other thing is this. Uh, we're talking about some pretty advanced stuff that you're doing. You're, you're up against, you know, the edge of the envelope. And in terms of um, applying the engineering principles and having an open mind, thinking out of the box, making, you know, these sophisticated analyses and all that. Um, but there's only a small percentage of the population really understands what you're doing uh, and appreciates what you're doing. Isn't, isn't part of this whole initiative to try to educate people to appreciate that through this kind of you know, Hawaii energy kind of efficiency initiative uh, that we can all do better. That it is a big part of reaching 2045, not a little part. Um, you know, who's doing that? Ramsey. Sure. Ramsey's doing Ramsey. that. Well, uh, <laughs> Answer your own question. <laughs> what is it? One of my uh, favorite quotes, I'll just say my grand grandfather told me this. There's two types of people or two types of smart people or two types of successful people in this world. People who can take complex ideas and keep the solutions to themselves to, to become successful, and others who can take these complex ideas and break it down and educate others to empower them. And you know, myself and Kevin, you know, we're both trying to be that, that latter type of person that, yeah, there's only one or two percent of people who understand what we're doing. Why? Why doesn't everybody understand this? It's not really, you know, it sounds like we're pushing the boundary, but it's physics, right? It's been around for eternity. <laughs> so um, it's something that we hope to educate, yeah. you know, our clients and, and, you know, with Ramsey's help, the community, so that we can all push. But at the end of the day, we want uh, every project that we worked on, everyone to be comfortable within their space and the client to have a, a system that they are happy with and operates well and they yeah. understand yeah. and yeah. can operate. Yeah. You're not looking for clients, you're looking for partners. Yes. Inception. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We want Excellent. We want to create relationships with these, these partners for a lifetime. It's that time, Ramsey. So it's, ti it's time to summarize the Let's pearls that have come out of this discussion. <laughs> what do you got? I think it's wonderful. WSP employs super engineers to help <laughs> advance Hawaii's building That's build infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited because we've always talked about energy efficiency being the first step. Uh, in making your home or building more uh, energy neutral. Um, and afterward, we're already seeing, you know, we're, we're beginning to see waves of transformation in energy storage, uh, in renewable energy and generation, um, in the grid infrastructure, in buildings getting smarter, um, perhaps using pad batteries in replace, uh, re replacement of generators, uh, a lot of cutting edge stuff. Um, and we see open doors of information flowing from the engineers that are designing these these things so that our, our people can be more educated and uh, operate their buildings more efficiently. We've got a new energy code coming. We're going to keep advancing on the next iteration of energy code as it comes. 
Uh, so we're excited that all, all engineers are working together. We're working to communicate here with you, Jay. Uh, so thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, Ramsey. That's Ramsey Brown, Hawaii Energy, Imua. <laughs> okay, and uh, Charles uh, Shalashi, uh, okay, uh, and Kevin Loma, both of WSP. Thank you so much for joining us on thank this you. important thank discussion. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, take care. Aloha. 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 <laughs>